We are thankful for another new year. We are so blessed when you look around and there are those who were with us last year are not here today. My wife and I, we were in Valdosta, Georgia this weekend and uh, we had back-to-back -back funerals. Had one on Saturday, one on Sunday. One was an older brother, one was a, a young man. It's just, I was just telling my wife is, none of us know when we are going to leave this life or how we are going to leave. But we need to make preparation every day that God gives to us because you don't, you don't have to be sick to die. You don't have to be in the hospital. You don't have to be at home to die. But we are. We are going to leave this life one day. So I say to the class tonight as well as to myself, uh, make every day count uh, with God. To those of you on Zoom tonight, thank you for being with us or wherever you are. Thank you for being with us tonight. And we hope you have your Bible, something to write with. And if you care to take notes, uh, fine. But we're studying from the greatest book in the world, the Bible. The Bible has been a bestseller for years, uh, class. And there is no other book like the Bible. It's right. It's not going anywhere. The word of God is not going to change. And we just need to read it, study it, and do our best to walk by it. We're glad to have those of you who are here tonight. It's a little cool tonight coming from where I live, Brazilton. Uh, we had a few sprinkles uh, coming uh, up uh, I-85. Uh, and of course, it's cool, but you know, we expect that this time of the year. Uh, of course, we, we uh, may get a little colder as we go on, but uh, we're going to make it. Just thankful, uh, like I said, to still be in the land of the living, thankful we can come to study the Bible together to, to reinforce. We're not, we're not here to change anything. No. We, we, uh, we're here to encourage what has already been written by men of God, approved by God. And so we're just here to encourage class uh, tonight. Second Thessalonians, if you have your Bibles or iPad or whatever you have, uh, but we're in the book of Second Thessalonians. Here again, uh, I repeat myself, uh, Paul in writing to this young congregation class uh, in Thessalonica, uh, two books, first Thessalonians, second Thessalonians, uh, striving to get this young church uh, in, in the right direction. Uh, sad to say, some false teaching going around just like today. But the Bible is right. And uh, Paul is encouraging these young this young congregation to continue uh, in God's word. One of the things was of great concern, uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ. He is coming, but we don't know when. He's not going to set foot on this earth. Christ is not going to set foot on this earth. This earth is going to be burned up. In class, the Bible teaches us, and we'll see that tonight, we are going to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. To be with him forever. So let's uh, 
believe the Bible. And as our study uh, indicate tonight, class, we are chapter one, chapter two, patiently waiting for Christ. Patiently waiting for the Lord. He is coming. And as we come together on the first day of the week, midweek, let's continue to do that. Not only uh, on the first, I mean, e every Sunday or every Wednesday, but even at home class, uh, pray, read your Bible, study. Let's not... Let's not wait until Sunday. Let's not wait until Wednesday night or whenever we have some special event. But every day, every day, do your best to pray, to study God's, read a portion of God's word. Uh, get you a good dictionary, regular dictionary. A good, get you a good Bible dictionary. Get you a concordance so that uh, you may understand uh, what the will of the Lord is. Uh, the Bible is not a difficult book to understand, class. Uh, we can understand it, but it takes study. It takes study. Chapter 2, class, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's look at it, if you have your Bibles. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the gathering together with him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he is as God, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the work of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Verse 10. And with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but has pleasure in unrighteousness. Verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Wherefore, he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us, has given us everlasting consolation. 
and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts. Establish you in every good word and work. So it is, class. Patiently, patient, or patiently waiting for the coming of the Lord. And as I said, we believe the Bible is right. The Lord is coming. We don't know when. He's not going to set foot on this earth. Those who've lived faithfully will meet the Lord in the air. Warning against unrest caused by wrong views concerning Jesus Christ's return. Now we beg you, Paul said to to the young church, I'm begging you, I'm pleading with you. Brethren, that is the entire congregation, men and women, been baptized into Christ by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, I'm going to give you the truth. Now, you've been hearing all of this false teaching about the Lord coming soon. Let, 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 me, let me, as an apostle, of Jesus Christ. Let me give you the truth concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not what you were hearing in the city, not what some guy come along and say. No. I'm going to give you the truth concerning the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, class. And there are some scriptures, class, I want us to look at tonight uh, in these first two verses. Uh, let's go first of all to Matthew chapter 24. Turn to Matthew chapter 24 class. And for those of you who are on Zoom, Matthew chapter 24. Look at verse 27 class. For as the be lightning cometh out of the east, shineth even unto the west, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He's coming. But even Matthew, now of course Matthew was an apostle. Notice Christ, he said, also the coming of of the Son of Man. He's coming. But Matthew does not give a day, time, but he's coming. And then verse 36, class, the same chapter, 24, 36. But of that day and hour, look, look here, class, but of that day and hour knoweth no man now, who are you? <laughs> who, who are you to come along and say he's coming in 2030 or he's coming in 2050? No. The apostle says, no man knoweth. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No. Not the angels of heaven. Not even angels of heaven. But the Father only. Only God knows when the Lord is coming back class. Luke 12. Turn over class to Luke 12. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12 and verse 40. Now, of course we know Luke uh, was not an apostle. Luke was a doctor. Wrote the two longest books in the Bible. Luke and Acts. But he was inspired by God to write. Look at verse 40, class. Luke says, but ye 
therefore ready also. For the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. No, no man knoweth. Only God knows when the Lord is coming. And then Revelation class, chapter 16. Revelation. Look at verse 15. Revelation 16. 15, behold, I come as a thief. Amen. That's the second coming. And of course, all of us, have, uh, I, don't, I don't mean in a harm class, but all of us read about thieves. Someone could be breaking into your car, your home, and you don't know it. What are you saying, Brother Iverson? The Lord is coming, but we don't know when. No man knoweth. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. Amen. We have to continue to be faithful, come to Bible study, come to worship, read our Bible at home, pray, and keepeth his garments. Class, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Now, how can we do that, class? By heeding to the word of God. We must not be found naked as members, as Christians, as members of the body of Christ. We can clothe the we can clothe ourselves with what, Brother Iverson? With the word of God. That's how we keep ourselves from being naked. By clothing ourselves with the word of God. And, and not, my thing is, class, uh, uh, not just on Sunday, but every day, every day we have an opportunity. Spend some time with the word of God. How many of you? From, from, my, from my right coming across, across the auditorium. How many of you, you, you do not raise your hand, but j just think for a minute. How many of you read your Bible today? Don't, don't raise your hand, but just think. How many of you took a little time to read your Bible today? How many of you had prayer today? We, we're still waiting. Yes, we're waiting for the Lord, but there are things that we must do before his coming, and that is continue to read the Bible, continue to study, continue to pray. In class, I'm a firm believer that should be every day. Every day. Not just, you know, once we get home on Sunday, we, we put the Bible aside. And we never open it anymore until maybe early Sunday morning. Where's my Bible? No. That Bible has sat there. That Bible has sat there all week collecting dust. Come on, class. Smile now. We're on candy camera. Collecting dust. And you mean to tell me you... You did not pick it up. You did not open it to read a few scriptures. Did you have prayer? Amen. I'm, I'm talking about the, the second coming. Things that we must do, class, in, in the coming of the Lord. That, that there are things that we can do. Since we don't know the day or the hour that he's coming, We must be diligent in our reading and studying and praying 
of the word of God. So yes, class, warning against unrest caused by wrong views concerning Jesus Christ's return. And we have some wrong views today. Men going around teaching things that that's not so. And then notice class, going back to 2 Thessalonians, I want to point out this class. Look at verse 1 again. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in man or be troubled, neither or neither by spirit. That's our spirit. Nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Remain steadfast, class. We have to remain. The word steadfast means to be firm. The word steadfast means to be steady. And how do we do that? By staying in the word of God. And that's what Paul is, is class is getting over to this young congregation. That you be not soon shaken in man or be troubled. You be, you be firm. In other words, be, another word we can use class, uh, to be established. I believe, the, I believe the word of God and this is what I'm going to stay with. Regardless of what others may be saying out there, class, uh, us, and, and remember this, class, be careful about that. Well, and, I, and I've had people, that, Brother Iverson, I read this book. This book says, well, let me, let me, that, who, who wrote this book? This, this, no, no, this something coming from man, not God. You, you, we, 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 we need to go back to what the Lord says. That man is not God. It, class, and to those of you on Zoom, everything that we need to know today concerning our spiritual salvation has already been written. <laughs> we have everything. Now, don't, please, don't misunderstand me. I mean, I read other books. I enjoy reading. I, you know, I read the newspaper, read other books. But my conclusion is here with the Bible, especially when, especially when it comes to my soul salvation. Amen. So let us, let us not caught up, class. Of course, I encourage you. I encourage you to read good books. But the final authority, the final authority has already been set. Jesus is coming again. And he's not going to set foot on this earth. We're going to meet him in the air. I don't care what some other book may say. The Bible is right. And we are going to stay with the Bible, class. Uh, so yes, look at verse 3, class. Let no man deceive you. Deceive, mislead. Let no man mislead you by any means. Or class, follow the wrong course. Don't do that. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of prediction. Prediction. Who oppose, look at verse 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 
And we have men like that today, class, set themselves up as some God. That was a time class, I'm not gonna call, I'm not gonna call in the name names. And some of you may remember that was a time when a certain group chained the Bible to the pulpit so that the people could not read it, could not get to it. I mean, who, who are you? Who are you to keep the word of God from people? That, that my understanding, in my, you know, that really happened. No. Each one of us tonight, you have a copy of the Bible. You can read it. You, you just don't have to accept what Brother Iverson is saying. You, you can read it for yourself. Class. And that's why, that's why the Bible encourages us to study to study, to show thyself approved unto God. That's what we must do. And not accept just what some man says or what somebody in my family says. It's what God has already said and it is coming to light, class. And that's what we must believe. And I'm, I'm so happy, class, I, I don't know about you, I, I'm so happy that God has, God has given us an opportunity like this to come together to study the word. Aren't you, aren't you, aren't you happy tonight? You know, aren't you happy tonight that, that we can come together and encourage one another? We can build one another up in the word of God. That Brother Iverson is not here, up here preaching and teaching some false doctrine. I can read it for myself. I can study it. And I'm not ashamed to provide what the Bible says to others who are being led astray. Class, that Sunday morning, Sunday morning, we can come together and Bible study. Amen. Study the word of God. Here we, here we have another opportunity. Nine o'clock. Sunday morning, I'm, I'm ready to study another portion of God's word. Wednesday night. Tomorrow night, uh, the men uh, are having a, a, a study. But not, not to bring up Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday night, the, late, the latest class on Tuesday. What? No. We're not coming to hear something new. No, we, we dare not do that. We, we come together to hear what God has already said to the apostles. It's been written down and we can be further encouraged. We can be further and lifted up from the word of God. And that's what, that's this, this young church somehow, somehow, False teaching had got in their class. And Paul said, no, we're going to straight this thing out. And that's what he's doing. And, and not only for, for them in, in Thessalonica, but even for us today. Let's, let's move on. Boy, I, I get so wrapped up there. Uh, you have to excuse me. Uh, verse, back, back to verse 4. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he is as God sitting in the temple of God, sad, showing himself that he is God, sad class. But let's move on to verse five. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Now, Paul, of course, you, we all know we've said that previously, uh, class that uh, Paul was there for three weeks and uh, had to leave. But Paul said, I told you, I, I, I told you these things, just like now, class. That's false, false doctrine out there going around. 
But tonight, or any time that we meet as members of the body of Christ, you're going to get the truth. Not some false doctrine, class. Verse 6, class. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity. Coming back to that class. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The word iniquity class carries the idea of unrighteousness, of lack of right doing class. And it's working. Evenness among us today, class, is, is, is just out of hand. So many people are being led astray. So yes, the mystery of iniquity does already work, class. There, there's so much evenness going on, and, 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 and a lot of these people think that they are right, class. They think they're right in, in what they're doing, what they are saying. But, but let's go back to the, to the source. That's the Bible. The Bible, you don't have the word, class. The Bible will always be right. Not, not what some man has written in a book? No, no. The Lord, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of them that published it. God directed the man of the men who wrote the Bible. God was with them. God put into their heart, this heart class, God put into their heart what he wanted them to write. We have it today. I think I said this about a week ago. There's nothing else coming. Everything that we need to know, class, that pertaineth to our salvation and the coming of the Lord, we can, we're, we're reading it now, and it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Class, oh, what is this? This is good, y'all. This, this, this is good. Okay. Uh, the announcement of events that will happen before Jesus' return, falling away, this self-exaltation of the man of sin. In due time, the lawless one will be revealed, accompanied by signs and lying wonders. Let me uh, pull this up, class. In due time, the wicked one shall be destroyed. Look at verse, uh, look at verse eight, class. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Look at verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of the devil or Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. That's happening even as I stand here and speak, class. You know, it's, it's so sad to see so many honest people, class. They, they rather believe what that man says rather than God. How many, how many of you sitting here tonight, uh, uh, Miss Cypher, Mr. So-and-so, uh, some other, I'm, I'm not going to call the name, but some other name uh, said, well, wait, wait a minute, he's not God. What, what the, have you read what Jesus, what, what did Jesus say? What, uh, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter, 
These were men of God. Amen. And, and you're going to take this man, this man, over the word of God, over what the apostles, the apostles have already said. And there are people out there, class, who are like that. Mr. Brother Ivers, Mr. So-and-so said, man, I don't care what Mr. So-and-so said, and I'm not going to call these other names. I don't care what he says. If that man, hear me loud and clear, and those of you on Zoom, hear me loud and clear. If that man, whoever he may be class, is not coming from Peter, Paul, John, and the other apostles, I don't want to hear you. Amen. I don't want to hear you. You, you. You're not coming from God's word. You're not coming from the book of Revelation. You're not coming from Peter. You're not coming from the book of Acts of the apostles. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't want to hear that false doctrine. I don't want to listen to it. And that's, that's the kind of class, that's the kind of attitude we should have. Amen. Yes, class, the Bible is right. In due time, that wicked one will be destroyed, class. Look at verse 10. The unrighteous will be deceived and condemned. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Why, Paul? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You know, class, I've had people tell me, oh, Miss Iverson, uh, uh, I, I don't want to hear that. I don't, uh, you don't have to read the Bible. I don't want to hear that. I've had people actually tell me that. Well, I'll tell you what. If you're not willing to listen to the Bible, the word of God, bye, I'm going, I'm leaving. Because I, I, I have nothing else, nothing else to share with you but the word of God. You say you want to be saved? And that, that's why I'm here. I, I'm here to talk to you from the Bible, the word of God. And if you, if you are not willing to, to listen to what God says, I don't need to be here. Class, it's, and some of you perhaps been in the same situation, sometimes you, you have to turn away from your own family. Why? They don't want to listen to the word of God. Here you trying to explain what God says. And, and I've had family members, I've had family members tell me, John, I don't want to hear that. Okay. Okay. You don't want to hear it? You're not going to waste my time. I'm moving on. I'm, man, I'm, I'm here to try, to try to save your soul, to give you some encouragement to obey God. And then you, you, you sign up and tell me, uh, I, you don't want to hear that from the Bible? Bye. I, I, class, I've actually had to do that to even members of my own family. Oh, I still love them. I still do what I can for them. But let me tell you something. You have a soul to save. And the only thing I want to do is, is share with you the word of God and let you know that you have to be baptized into Christ. Amen. You have to be baptized into Christ so that all your sins will be washed away. Now, if you don't want to hear that, if you don't want to listen to that from the Bible, bye. 
He kind of reminds me of a uh, class, uh, what, Acts chapter 8. You remember uh, Philip and the Ethiopian unit? You, you remember that? This man, I mean, perhaps well educated, you know, had a high position, uh, treasurer for the queen of Ethiopia, had been to Jerusalem to worship, the Bible tells us. He had been to Jerusalem to worship. Now, on his way back home, I understand, uh, Acts chapter, reading his Bible, there were some things he didn't understand. Now, look, look how God works. And, and I believe, Claire, that that will work today. What, what did the Lord do? The Lord dispatched Philip out to where he was. Philip pulled his chair up alongside the Ethiopian. He said, he asked him, he said, now, sir, I, I don't mean any harm, but do you understand what you're reading? Now, no, notice the response, class. The unit... The unit did not say, oh, man, look here. Who, 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 you, who, who you think you are? Do you know who I am? <laughs> Do you know who I am? The, fiddle, the, the unit didn't. He said, how can I accept some man should guide me? The Bible says, Philip opened his Bible and preached unto him Jesus. Now, class, there must have been some understanding there. Because the unit said, see, here is water. What does him to me from being baptized? That now, there's a necessary inference there, class. Now, what do you mean by that, Brother Iverson? Philip had to say something to the eunuch about water baptism. What happened, class? You, you all know the story. The Bible says both got out of the chair, both went down into the water. Philip baptized him, and according to what we read in the Bible, the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. I said that to say this, class, we have to do the same thing when it comes to teaching the Bible today, even when it comes to the second coming of Christ. Teach people the truth, whether they like it or not. This earth is going to be destroyed. The Lord is not going to set foot on this earth. We're going to meet the Lord in the air. We have to tell people the truth, whether they like it or not. Philip, the man of God, told the unit the truth. He saw it from his heart. And that's all we can do, class. That's all we can do. Tell people the truth. And I have a study, the Lord is coming. And those of us who are here tonight, we will prepare ourselves. I, I'm here. I want, you, I want you to encourage me. Just because I'm, you know, I'm a Bible school teacher. Doesn't mean uh, I, I'll remain faithful for, forever. I, you know, I can fall away tomorrow. You can fall away tomorrow, class. We're here, I really believe, we're here to be reinforced on what God says, not what Brother Iverson says. I, I, I'm just here to reinforce I'm just here to reinforce what the Bible says. I don't, class, I don't have nothing new. Now, if you, you come out here every Wednesday night looking for something, well, not only Brother Ivers, but other Bible school teachers here at our congregation. Man, we don't come out here to hear something new. It's already been said. And that's what Paul was trying to get this new. These lies, Paul and Silas and Timothy, these lies that's going around, that Christ is coming next week, he's coming next month. No, don't, no, don't listen to that. No, no man knows when he's coming. Don't be fooled. And that's why, class, we, we come together. Uh, Paul makes that uh, affectionate appeal 
to the members of the Lord's church. Comfort to members uh, of the body. Well, let me, let me read. Let me read verse 11, Claire, real quickly. For this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they might be damned who believe not the truth, but has pleasure in unrighteousness. There are people like that today who have pleasure in unrighteousness. No, class. No. Verse 14. Where unto he call you, notice this, he call you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice now, class, call you by our gospel. By our gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, not some other gospel by man. And then, class, as we close out, look at verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. That's what we're doing tonight. It's not by Brother Iverson's word. Class, no. It's by the word of God. I'm just trying, class. I'm trying to do my best to reinforce what the Lord and the apostles have already said. To give some encouragement. And we need that. To give encouragement. Class. There, look at verse 15 again, class. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Hold the tradition which you've been taught, whether by word or principle. Look at verse 16. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. One, one scripture class before, before we, we got, yeah. Look at, uh, where is it, Brother Ivory? Look at 1 Peter 3. Boy, that, I want to look at 1 Peter real quickly. Look at that one, class. Those of you on Zoom, you have your Bibles? Look at 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 3. And look at, ooh. Look at verse 15, class. Look at it. Peter says, but sanctify. You know what the word sanctify means? Set aside, set apart. Sanctify the Lord God where? Well, Peter, in your heart, in your hearts, be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh. Notice that ETH class. Now, everybody's not going to ask. But the unit did. I mean, the, uh, uh, when, when Philip met, yeah, the unit. How can I accept some man should guide me? The Bible said, Philip began at the same scripture, preached unto him, Jesus. So it is, but sanctify the Lord God in your Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks of you a reason of the hope that is in you. With me, do it with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ Jesus. Yes. Verse 16 and 17 as we close. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God even our Father which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you 
in every good word and work. So it is, class. Patiently, we are patiently waiting for the coming of the Lord. He is coming. He is coming. We don't know when. But be faithful. Be faithful. Study, read, pray. Let's encourage one another. And I, I be, I be honest with you, class. <laughs> I, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. But I need encouragement. You need encouragement. And we can encourage one another. This world is terrible. It's so terrible. Every day, look like there's a new chapter around the world. It's not, it's not getting any better. And many of you know that. I don't have to stand up here and preach or teach to you. You, you know that. It's not getting any better. Even in our little area around here, Buford and uh, different places, Atlanta and whatever, every day is something. Why? Because men are not willing to listen and abide by the word of God. And it's sad. As, as I close, to all of us here tonight and to myself, save your soul. May God bless you. May God keep you. Hope to see you Sunday morning in Bible study at 9 o'clock. Thank you.